There's a storm across the valley The clouds are rolling in The afternoon is heavy on your shoulders There's a truck out on the four lane A mile or more away The whining of his wheels just makes it colder. Welcome to Community Forum. Today is October 10th, 2023. My name is Priscilla Almquist Olson, your host, and today we're welcoming on the show three very active ladies, all graduates of Oliver Raines High School, um, younger than I am, of course, not that much younger. <laughs> But they are loyal members, uh, as I am, of the Eastern Historical Society and Museum. And they're here today to tell about a really interesting program that's coming up on October 22nd at the depot on Mechanic Street, the home of the Historical Society and Museum. And it runs from 12.30 to 4. 30. 30. 12.30 to 4.30. So welcome, Virginia uh, Moore Murray and Joanne Duhamel and- England. What was your maiden name? Duhamel. Oh, Duhamel, right. Yes, I'm Joanne England. Oh, you're in, oh, okay. Joanne Duhamel, England. You see how we're all dated? <laughs> <laughs> and um, in Worcester Jewelry. And Anne, of course, is the daughter of uh, Buddy Worcester, uh, whom we all admired and loved, who was, uh, teacher of English at Olive Rains High School for so many years, but also the author of the uh, book of photographs uh, that one can buy at the Historical Society that Jonathan Coe took. He took the photos and Buddy wrote the, shall we say, the lyrics to the book. So welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Priscilla. So tell me, Jenny, how did this, uh, wh what's the name of this program? Growing up in Easton in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And what sorts of things are you going to have? Well, we have an assortment of things. It's very eclectic. I brought a little Ginny doll with me today. Oh, and how appropriate. <laughs> yes, this is my little Ginny doll. I was never thinking as a little girl named Virginia that there would ever be a doll named after me. So uh, that was pretty exciting. And um, Joanne brought some, some records from so the period. Joanne, Tell, tell us where your, your albums come from. Okay. You can hold it up and show All the right. audience. So hopefully our whole program will show the contrast of, of the years growing up, starting in the 50s through the 70s. And I chose these albums to show the stark contrast between the <laughs> 1950s and then what evolved into the 60s and the 70s, which of course is the Beatles and the music and the culture changed. Um, so very much between these um, eras of these years. Easton always remained the same, the small town, but within there was a lot going on and influenced us growing up in Easton in those years. Mm. And Anne, um, what is your contribution? I think mostly, um, well, memories of the, the 60s and 70s, I have, um, done a whole board or display that connects with the, the 1970s. I also have um, appropriated a whole lot of vintage candy. I have these um, <laughs> little gold nuggets in the bag. Um, I have Beeman's gum, which probably predates the 1970s, but um, I remember going down to the corner store and, and buying a lot of the candy. So we're gonna have a lot of vintage candy mm -hmm. at the open house, along with some home baked goods that are connected with the um, 50s, okay. 60s, and 70s. <laughs> Well, um, this is interesting. And so when, when one comes on the 22nd, which is a Sunday from 1230 to 430 at the Historical Society on Mechanic Street, the depot, we all know, what, what else is one going to see? I mean, there's such an uh, amazing amount of items from this era. There is. I think when you walk in, you should be blasted by music from the period. And um, that will be kind of the beginning you ought to be able to see midnight chocolate cake that was a staple of the cafeteria and one of our favorite desserts in the Easton school system. 
forever. Um, what else? Um, I have a lot of old newspapers from those times in uh, politically and what was going on in the country was very interesting and did impact us as students, mm -hmm. especially the draft. And I do have a copy of a draft notice. Um, but, the, but there are a lot of things that happened between those years within our own country that sort of evolved. And as I say, the music reflected that. Absolutely. And Anne, uh, what else do you see uh, as part of the exhibit? Uh, one of the things that mm -hmm. I include, I, I graduated from Olive Ramps in 1974, so I do have um, an old newspaper and some photos connected with that graduation in that class. I also was a member of the very first um, women's or girls track team at Olive Ramps, which um, mm -hmm. started in 1973. I believe we were just a club the first year. And then the second year, um, we were a team, but we competed. And I actually have my number from one of my events and a, um, a third prize in the long jump. So I think in terms mm -hmm. of you know, like women, and, and I wasn't overly involved in sports, but I think in yeah. terms of women's sports, things evolved a lot during that time, sure. too. Yeah, yeah, and that was a really revolutionary time for women, wasn't exactly. it? Exactly, yeah. it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in Title X. Yes. Uh, or was it nine? Title nine? Nine, I think, yeah came in and look what's happened today. We have women who have achieved uh, Olympic uh, gold and uh, 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 the tennis, think about the, all the US Open tennis players uh, and the golf. Look at what's happened to golf. Mm -hmm. It used to be a men's sport, no longer. And with some of the sports, um, the women's uh, competitions are a lot more interesting and have more attendance than some of the men's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, years ago, um, I don't know how many years back, not too many, I went to Wheaton College to hear Gloria Steinem speak. Mm -hmm. And after mm -hmm. the lecture, I asked her if she thought we had really changed things for women mm -hmm. since the 60s, because that was, we were feminists and mm -hmm. all. And she said, think about it. She said, what were your options? And I said, oh, being a teacher or a nurse, mm -hmm. I became a teacher. Joanne became a nurse. I became a nurse. Teacher, nurse, or secretary. <laughs> and, was my choices. and I looked at yeah, my daughter true. who was there, and she majored in chemistry and geology, and she exactly. was a scientist. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have, we have changed things, and, mm -hmm. and um, it's all for the good. And sometimes baby boomers are kind of looked at as a relic these days. Yeah. But I don't think we're ever going to be old in our minds. You know, we're just no, strong. No. And so, but nostalgia is fun. And, and so I was big into music. And so I have pictures of the sound of music that we performed in at the Immaculate Conception Church in 1966. We did uh, the sound of music and Lisa Lupica, who became Lisa Garsha. Uh, was in it. She remembers that fondly. And Mrs. Ashley took us to the Brockton Symphony Orchestra mm -hmm. as seniors in high school. So they had always a strong music program. Mm -hmm. And the library, I have a bookmark that the Ames family brought back from Italy in one of their trips. And I was fortunate enough to win the sixth grade reading contest that year. Oh, wow. So. And, there, <laughs> and you got that bookmark. I did. Wow, what a treasure. Um, so that'll be on display too. Well, we I, th I, I suspect it's in a book that's half read somewhere that I am still <laughs> looking for. So. Well, isn't it true? Um, I have donated so many artifacts, so many items, and I'm sure you have too. Mm -hmm. um, Ginny and Joanne are on the board of directors for the Historical Society, and in um, yeah. jewelry, she, you have written wonderful, wonderful newsletters that have gone out to all the members. And uh, every month there's a new topic. There are photos that go with it, uh, all kinds of interesting information, um, much of which most of us don't know. And so it's a wonderful contribution that you're doing. Um, <clears throat> and, and to get back to Ginny's point, uh, I, remember I graduated in 1960. So yes, being a teacher or a nurse, and so I became a teacher, even though I was valedictorian of my class. And the, <clears throat> uh, you know, and I just didn't have the mindset. We weren't given that mindset to do more. Well, in the 60s, I became an activist, feminist. Uh, I worked for the civil rights cause and the women's cause. And also, of course, many of us against the war in Vietnam, too. So all those causes brought me to law school. And so I retired 
uh, in 2012 after 35 years practicing law, but I was a teacher for 10. So part of that movement in the 60s that came to, came to birth in the 70s, right, Anne? Mm -hmm. uh, which gave women uh, the, the right to choose whatever they wanted and whatever they, were, they dreamed of or whatever they were good at came to fruition. And so for me, I was fortunate that I became involved mm -hmm. in all those causes, which made me think beyond just being a teacher. But I was a good teacher. And um, I think as an attorney, teaching and being able to explain things succinctly, factually, is important. So my years as a teacher benefited me when I became a lawyer. Mm -hmm. and, um, uh, and obviously, having these shows, uh, you know, lawyers are entertainers, and hopefully that's rubbed off too. <laughs> but uh, so, um, and I have donated so many things. And, and if you go into the ladies' room of the Historical Society, you will see all these dolls and teddy bear and other things uh, that came from the, the 30s, 40s, 50s that I donated. Um, and so, uh, and we're still doing it, right? Some of us are doing Swedish death cleaning. And, and so the Historical Society is going to get much more stuff. And hopefully, uh, we'll see a lot of the 50s, 60s, and 70s nostalgia. So what else do you expect, uh, Anne, from this uh, exhibit? Um, I hope a lot of people will come down and um, enjoy what we have. We're going to have, we have a video um, that Steve Anderson, one of our directors, has created that was actually made for the Class reunion, 1969, am I correct, I think? Yes, I and think so. And it's going to be streaming. It's, it's about that particular class. There's a lot of um, football. And what was the, um, they used to do with Oliver Reigns with the, the sticks and the oh, jimbery. Oh, oh, yes, yes. Um, the gym that jam. Kind, in, in that video, mm -hmm. which is going to be playing in the background. Oh, my goodness, that was the. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the bamboo sticks. The bamboo yes. sticks. Oh my yes. gosh, that was the a, gym that was incredible. I remember doing doing it in gym class, but they had stopped doing the gymboree by the yes. time. Yes, uh, yes. I got to. I yeah. yeah, they they were always fun. They were. They were. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and so Joanne, um, do you hope uh, besides help hoping that people will come and um, maybe you could talk about a little bit about membership? Oh yes, hopefully that they'll. Um, join or think about joining and we'll have the membership membership forms there available um, you know we have some good deals on membership and some discounts for seniors and families and whatever and that would be nice to get more involvement in the historical society and just see what we do do and learn more about Easton yeah, and to preserve the history uh, yes. and the uh, social history as well and the industrial history um, yes. and so forth is so important. And yes, it is. Uh, let me tell you, it's only $7 a year for seniors. I mean, you can't beat that I know price. you can't beat that. So most of us donate a little bit more than that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you don't have to. So right. you know, come in and, and help, uh, help out the, to continue and preserve uh, the history of Easton. Uh, Jenny, do you have any other last words you want to say about well, I just wanted to say we're grateful to Hazel Perella for all she's done throughout the years for the Historical Society and Museum. She is one of a kind and a treasure mm -hmm. of her own. She always comes to events, too. So, yes, she does. So that would be an added plus for people to, to see yes. her there. Yes, right. So she'll be there with, um, with bells on. Yes. Um, w my class had its 63rd reunion two weeks ago, and she came to the meet and greet at the... Um, Historical Society, and also to our reunion luncheon the following day. Uh, and Bill Nixon showed up, and he's oh, 95. Wonderful. Bill Nixon was the teacher wonderful. of history and the coach with Val Moscato, uh, Muzzy. And of course, Hazel, just to, we, we have always invited Hazel and Bill Nixon to all our reunions, and they have faithfully attended. So it was wonderful to see them again, too. And um, so, and Hazel is amazing. She is so well preserved, not just from the neck down, but from the neck up. It is amazing. Yeah, she is. And she's 91 this year, I think. I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, God bless her. All right, well, thank you so much, everyone.
for coming, and thanks thank for you. your dedication to the Historic Society and, and so forth. And I'm looking forward to this wonderful celebration. And remember, you don't have to be uh, graduates from the 50s, 60s, or 70s to come and enjoy this. Um, it, it's an educational experience as well to see what was happening during those uh, eras. So come and bring your children. They'll be interested too. Again, that's October 22nd, Sunday, 12.30 to 4.30. Hopefully you will all make time and share this with your family. We'll see you then. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for my guests. Thank you. And until next time, be well. <laughs>